Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to, to this morning's press briefing. I want to thank you, the press, for the partnership and the strategic role you played in helping to inform the Ghanaian people about the bank's monetary policy decisions. This morning's press briefing follows the meetings of the MPC, and this morning the chairman of the committee will speak to us on the decisions of the committee. I will, as always, we'll give you the press an opportunity to ask questions at the end of the chairman's statement. We're live on Facebook, at the Bank of Ghana, on the Bank of Ghana website, bog.go.gh, and on YouTube, Bank of Ghana. It's time to listen to the chairman. I respectfully invite the chairman of MPC and governor, Dr. Ennis Addison, to deliver his statement. Thank you very much, uh, Sami, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the media, and welcome to the press briefing for the 120th Monetary Policy Committee meeting. The committee met this week, deliberated and assessed global and domestic macroeconomic developments and the balance of risks to the outlook. A summary of the assessments and key considerations that informed the committee's decision on the positioning of the monetary policy rate is as follows. Global growth continued at a steady pace in the second quarter of 2024, supported by stronger spending, a resilient services sector, and declining crude oil prices. However, continued weakness in the manufacturing sector, moderated growth momentum in China, cooling labor markets in advanced economies, escalating geopolitical tensions, and rising uncertainties related to elections in many countries could potentially weigh on growth prospects in the second half of 2024. The latest projections by the International Monetary Fund forecast growth to remain unchanged at 3.2% for 2024 and slightly up to 3.3% in 2025. Global inflation continues to slow down on account of declining crude oil prices, food prices, and moderating wage growth. Crude oil prices fell due to weaker than expected economic growth in China. The Food and Agriculture Organization's Global Food Price Index declined by 1.1% in August on the back of lower prices for cereals, meat, and sugar. In addition, cooling labor markets in advanced economies have contributed to moderation in wage growth, which has helped reduce services inflation. Core inflation has also declined in both advanced and emerging market economies, with the weakening US dollar playing a crucial role in alleviating inflationary pressures for emerging market and developing economies. Looking ahead, the ongoing global disinflation is expected to continue, albeit at a slower pace. Central banks in major advanced economies have begun the much-anticipated policy easing cycle amid declining inflation rates. The Federal Reserve Bank, the European Central Bank, and the Bank of England have all reduced their policy rates in recent months as inflation gradually approaches targets. The expectation for lower policy rates has brought down long-term bond yields, supported a rebound in equity prices, and led to a strengthening of portfolio flows to emerging market and developing economies in recent months as investors search for higher yields. Further declines in the policy rate in advanced economies is expected to result in an easing in global financial conditions in the near term. Provisional GDP data from the Ghana Statistical Service for the second quarter of 2024, point to a stronger growth outlook than expected. Real GDP grew by 6.9% in 
in the second quarter of 2024, compared with 2.5% in the corresponding quarter of 2023, and 4.7% in the first quarter of 2024. Non-oil GDP growth was 7%, compared with 3.1% in the same period of 2023. The growth outturn was largely driven by a strong performance in the industry sector, which grew by 9.3%, having contracted by 2.6% same time last year. The services and agricultural sectors also grew by 5.8% and 5.4%, respectively. Trends in the bank's high-frequency real sector indicators point to sustained pickup in economic activity. The updated real composite index of economic activity recorded an annual growth of 1.6% in July 2024 compared to a contraction of 2.8% for the corresponding period of 2023. Construction activities, consumption demand by households and firms, exports, imports, and tourist arrivals contributed to the improvement in economic activity during the period. The latest surveys conducted in August 2024 show a rebound in both consumer and business confidence. Consumer confidence improved on account of easing inflationary pressures, which has led to optimism about future economic conditions. Similarly, business confidence firmed up as firms met their short-term targets and expressed positive sentiments about company and industry prospects amidst improving macroeconomic conditions. The survey findings were broadly in line with observed trends in Ghana's Purchasing Managers Index, which improved to 51.1 in August 2024 from 50.1 in the previous month. Domestic price development since the last MPC indicate a disinflation process that remains on track. This was largely supported by the still tight monetary policy stance and easing food inflation. Headline inflation has declined consistently since the last MPC to 20.4% in August from 22.8% in June and 20.9% in July 2024, driven mainly by food inflation. Food inflation declined to 19.1% in August, from 24% in June, and 21.5% in July, while non-food inflation dropped marginally to 21.5% from 21.6% in June 2024. The bank's main core measure of inflation, which isolates prices of energy and utility items from the consumer basket, is to 19.4% in June, in August 2024, from 22.1% in June. Provisional data on budget execution from January to July 2024 indicated an overall fiscal deficit on commitment basis of 2.4% of GDP against the budget target of 2.8% of GDP. The deficit of 24.8 billion Ghana cities was fined from domestic 24.2 billion and foreign 17.4 billion cities respectively. The primary balance for the period was a deficit of 3.8 billion Ghana cities or 0.4% of GDP against a primary deficit target of 3.5 billion Ghana cities, or 0.3% of GDP. Developments in August 2024 showed a decline in total liquidity relative to the corresponding period in 2023. Annual growth in M2 Plus declined to 37.1% in August 2024, relative to 40.8% in August 2023 due to a moderation in the pace of growth in net domestic assets of depository institutions. In contrast, net foreign assets of depository institutions increased significantly, reflecting a net buildup in foreign assets. 
The decline in broad money supply was reflected in a slower pace of growth in demand deposits, savings and time deposits, and foreign currency deposits. Growth in currency held by the public, however, increased over the same comparative period. Private sector credit continued to grow during the review period to 21.7% in August 2024, from 10.7% in August 2023. In real terms, private sector credit recorded a growth of 1.1% relative to a 21% contraction in 2023. On a year-on-year -year basis, money market interest rates broadly trended downwards. The 91-day and 182-day Treasury bill rates declined from 24.8% and 26.7% respectively in August from 26.35% and 27.84% in the corresponding period of 2023. Similarly, the rate on the 364-day instrument declined to 27.9% in August 2024 from 30.8% in August 2023. The weighted average lending rate on the interbank market increased. The rate increased to 26.84 percent in August 2024 from 26.59 percent in August 2023. The average lending rates of banks to households and firms over the period declined marginally to 30.7 percent in August 2024 from 31.78 percent in August 2023. The banking sector's performance continued to improve, with assets growing at 38.7% at end August 2024, compared to 19.6% in August 2023. Both pre-tax and after-tax profits were higher in the first eight months of 2024, relative to the same period last year. On solvency, the capital adequacy ratio of the industry stood at 10.3% in August 2024, higher than the 7.5% recorded in August 2023. With reliefs, the capital adequacy ratio was 13.8% in August 2024 compared to 14.2% in August 2023. Liquidity and efficiency ratios also improved during the first eight months of the year highlighting that broadly key financial soundness indicators are improving in the banking sector and remaining positive. Despite these improvements, the NPL ratio was 24.3% in August 2024, up from 20% in August 2023, reflecting increased defaults from large borrowers and highlighting that elevated credit risk remains the primary concern for the sector's outlook. On the international commodities market, trends in the prices of Ghana's major export commodities were mixed. From the beginning of the year to August 2024, crude oil prices declined by 2.1% to settle at an average price of $78.9 per barrel due to slowing demand in China and the U.S. Cocoa prices eased to 7409 0.5 US dollars per ton in August, after climbing to an all-time high of 10,116.8 US dollars per ton in April 2024. In contrast, gold prices rose by 21.3% on a year-to-date basis to an average price of 2,469.39 US dollars per fine ounce on the back of geopolitical tensions and expectations of rate cuts by the U.S. Federal Reserve. The external payment position was strong in the first eight months. The trade balance recorded a provisional surplus of 2.78 billion U.S. dollars, higher than the surplus of 1.66 billion U.S. dollars recorded in the corresponding period of 2023. The surplus was primarily driven by an increase in gold and crude oil exports. Total exports went up by 22.3% to 
to 12.92 billion US dollars. Notably, gold exports rose by 62.2% to 7.27 billion US dollars, while crude oil exports went up by 16.7% to 2.7 billion US dollars. In contrast, cocoa exports, both beans and products, fell by 42.7% to 917.8 million US dollars in August 2024, mainly due to the challenges posed by extreme weather conditions. The total import bill increased by 14% to 10.14 billion US dollars over the same period. Of the total, oil imports increased by 3.6% to 3 billion US dollars, while non oil imports went up by 19% to 7.1 billion US dollars. The strong buildup in international reserves continued into August 2024. Gross international reserves increased by 1.58 billion US dollars to 7.5 billion US dollars at the end of August 2024, equivalent to 3.4 months of import cover. Net international reserves also increased by 1.73 billion US dollars to 4.92 billion US dollars at the end of August 2024. The higher buildup in gross international reserves was largely on account of the strong performance of the domestic gold purchase program. After coming under pressure in May and June, the exchange rate has generally stabilized in recent times. This was mainly driven by the still tight monetary policy stance and improved forex liquidity support. From the beginning of the year to 25th September 2024, the Ghana CD depreciated by 24.3% against the US dollar. In the second half of the year, the CD has witnessed a slower pace of depreciation of 7.1%. Summary and outlook. The external environment has improved since the last MPC meeting as global economic activity remained resilient in the second quarter of 2024. Growth was supported by private and government spending, a resilient services sector and declining oil prices. Additionally, the anticipated policy easing cycle initiated by major central banks in advanced economies in response to declining inflation rates have also been supportive of growth. These conditions are favorable for the domestic economy. The domestic economy continues to recover, evidenced by the stronger than expected GDP outturn for the second quarter of the year. Growth in the second half of the year is also expected to be firm, supported by sustained activities in the construction sector, consumption of goods and services by households and firms, exports of gold and crude oil production, as well as banks' extension of credit to the private sector. The external payment position continues to improve, characterized by higher trade surplus and strong reserves buildup. Notably, the robust growth in gold exports has helped to improve the trade balance and international reserves, complemented by external financial flows, inflows from the IMF and the World Bank. These together have contributed to an improved balance of payments position in the first half of 2024. Looking ahead to the end of the year, the balance of payments is projected to achieve a surplus driven by increased exports, stronger remittance flows, and lower government external payments. In the assessment of the committee, preliminary data since the last MPC meeting held in July 2024 indicates that macroeconomic conditions have generally improved. Headline inflation has eased and growth has picked up. Fiscal policy implementation has been robust, providing impulse that is supportive of growth, while monetary conditions have remained tight and supportive of the disinflation process. Headline inflation since the first quarter has declined 
for the fifth consecutive month by 5.4 percentage points. Core inflation has also de declined sharply over the same comparative period by 6.9 percentage points. These trends suggest that the disinflation process is on course. The latest forecasts show that the inflation will continue to ease towards the range target of 13 to 17 percent for the year and steadily track back towards the medium term target of 6 to 10 percent by the end of 2025, bearing unanticipated shocks. At the current juncture, the committee judged the risks to inflation outlook as fairly balanced. Given these considerations, the committee decided to lower the monetary policy rate by 200 basis points to 27%. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> For our viewers who just joined our live broadcast, uh, you watching the press brief, you follow the 120th MPC meetings. We want to thank some of the media houses who are streaming this press briefing live on their media portals, uh, Ghana Web, Nova Reports, Asasi Radio. We thank you for streaming the press briefing live. It's question time and um, press colleagues, you heard the chairman speak on the decisions of the committee. If you require some further clarifications, Jean um, shall give you the opportunity to ask questions that is related to uh, the statement of what it's been said here. So, um, be very brief also with your questions. Respectfully, one question in the media house, very brief with our long preamble. So, um, first round, George Raffi, um, Tuma, uh, Jennifer, and Elom. George. Good morning, Governor. My name is George Raffi from Joy FM. I want to look at the test of the city. It's been relatively stable. Uh, but some will also think that we could have done better looking at what is happening right now. In terms of support, are we going to see more intervention from your part since you have built up enough reserves, even for the IMF itself, to see that you can now up the support for the market? Are we going to see that from your side in terms of upping the support for the market to deal with the, the seasonal pressure as you get into December season? Okay. Very brief. So, how successful has the Bank of Ghana's um, tiered um, cash reserve ratio applied for banks been in terms of encouraging banks to lend? Okay, Toma. Thank you, Jennifer. Very brief. Good morning, Governor. My name is Jennifer Ambley with the Chronicle newspaper. Um, Governor, I want to find out, given the recent ban on grain export due to the recent drought conditions and the potential need to import food to stabilize domestic supply, how does the bank plan to manage the anticipated increase in foreign exchange demand? Thank you. Okay. Um, Jennifer, thank you. Hello. Yeah. Mr. Governor, you said we recorded a trade a trade surplus of 2.7 billion. Uh, but there's a little pressure on the city. I just wanted to know where the pressure is coming from, whether from the supply side or the demand side. Thank you. OK. Thank you. Someone will take your response. Well, thank you very much for those questions, uh, and most of them related to the stability of the exchange rate. And I think starting with the alarms question, which I think uh, more or less re-echoes the earlier questions that came through, uh, we have a trade surplus of 2.6 billion, so why is the city not appreciating, if you should put it that way? <laughs> And I remember in the last MPC press briefing, I had explained the uniqueness of 2024 and the importance of sentiments and expectations in setting exchange rates. 
So what we are seeing is a significant improvement in the fundamentals, a significant improvement in inflation, significant improvement in the build-up of reserves. And in spite of that, you are not seeing that pass through in terms of the stability of the currency. So I'll go back to the same explanation that I gave in the last MPC meeting, that 2024 is a unique year. We all know that you, we have elections uh, coming up. There's a lot of uncertainty, and individuals are behaving uh, in ways that they would have behaved differently in a normal year. So I think that a significant part of what we are seeing relates to, to this. Having said that, going back to George, your first question on the relatively stable exchange rate and whether we could have done better and whether we will be upping our support to the market. Central bank corporations are not supposed to be that overt that we should tell you in advance whether we'll be upping our interventions on the market or not. I think that you have to trust that we have enough reserves and we have the ability to intervene in the market if we find it necessary, right? So I think that for the market, rest assured that the central bank has enough reserves. Uh, you've seen it for yourselves. And if it is necessary for us to increase uh, the foreign exchange intervention, we will. Then Thomas' question on tiered, the success of the tiered reserve requirements. Well, again, I would say it has been successful because the principal reason why that policy was introduced was to manage liquidity, to get the banks that are not lending to the general public to, in a sense, keep those unutilized liquidity in Bank of Ghana instruments, which are more or less sterilized uh, from the economy. And we have seen that, that the sterilization buffers in the central bank has gone up. And it has acted as an anchor uh, for prices. We have seen a significant uh, drop in, in inflation also. So if you look at it that way, we, 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 it's, it's been very successful. Along with that, we are also seeing a pickup in private sector credit, even though the intention was mainly focused on the liquidity uh, management aspects. And then Jennifer's question again, back to the same exchange rate matter, whether the food imports would put pressure on the markets and thereby translate into currency instability. I can only assure you that the central bank has enough reserves uh, to deal with any in, I mean, import pressures. That's it. Thank you, Chairman. Nano Ye Maxwell. Maxwell Dombila. Okay. Quiet, Nano Ye. Right, thank you. Good morning. Um, Governor, please, has your team done any research into Coco Boss um, current decision not to go fully for a syndicated loan? And what do you anticipate to be the long term impact of that? Okay, no, yeah. Thank you, Governor Maxwell. I don't believe really it is. I was wondering this came as a surprise to me and perhaps to the market. A review it did said if you are going to cut you, we're looking at around 50, maximum 100. So I'm wondering, are you, did you do this bullish cut because of the fund's concerns around the uh, reserve ratio that you are also using to achieve inflationary uh, objectives? Is it is it the case that because you are kind of not allowed to use that tool again. That's why you then decided to put all the pressure on this. So mainly if you can explain and relate it to 
what this means to the um, reserve ratio that you were also using before. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you very much. My name is Lord Nati. I write for trainnews.com. So, Governor, I would like to ask two questions. Um, Do one, just one, one, please. Thank right, you. Okay. So, okay, Sam, thank you. So, I'd like to do a follow up on the Societe General issue. So, the last time you spoke about it here, you mentioned that the Bank of Ghana had written to Societe General to furnish you with all the, the persons seeking to acquire shares in the bank. So, I'd like to do a follow up on this. Okay, well, thank you, Chairman. We'll take a response. Again, starting with the somehow the last questions are the easiest to answer. The last question on the society general issue. Yes, as an update, we we have been furnished with all the bidders for the shares that are being disposed of. So the bidding process is still ongoing, and hopefully, when the decide on the preferred bid out, they will also let us know. Now, Ye and Coco Board, I think that's a good question. The Coco Board syndicated law, as you know, normally is very critical for a fourth quarter foreign exchange inflows. So, Uncertainty regarding that obviously will be of concern to the Bank of Ghana. Fortunately, this year we have had this domestic gold purchasing program, which has more than compensated for our inability to raise as much resources from cocoa in the first three months of the year. And we are hoping that we will be able to sustain this gold purchasing program, right, to compensate for any shortfalls in outflows from COCO. Having said that, we are aware that COCO board is more or less replacing the syndication of banks with the brand companies who are going to be buying COCO during the last quarter of the year. This is new, so we, we are all quite, um, what's the word, uh, waiting to see uh, how well this new arrangement will work. Uh, this is the first time that uh, this exercise, uh, this new self-financing scheme has been put into place. But we think that we have enough uh, in terms of reserve flows from, from our gold exports as an insurance in case things don't go as well as expected on the cocoa side. So now, yeah, I hope you're happy with that. <laughs> then Reuters, I don't believe you. I'm glad we were able to uh, surprise the market. It would have been very predictable if we had come and reduced the policy rate by 50 to 50 basis points, 100 basis points, because that's what the market was expecting. But so we we think that not being able to be predictable is in itself a good attribute of a good monetary policy committee process. So I think the decision speaks for itself. Uh, the monetary policy press release, if you look at it, stresses on general improvements in macroeconomic conditions, literally everywhere. On the global side, things are improving. Uh, growth is down, global disinflation is down, the developments there uh, will inure to the benefit of our domestic economy. Uh, back at home, growth is fairly robust relative to the original assumptions. Inflation is down, the fiscal policy is on track. You look at the balance of payments, uh, reserves are stronger, exports are stronger. I mean, it's really a message of hope that we have really recovered from uh, the 
debts that we went to in 2022. So I think that's the message, that's such a strong uh, signaling of the monetary policy rate by reducing it by 200 uh, basis points. It tells you that the central bank is quite satisfied with the progress of recovery of this economy. Thank you. Um, last round, um, Norvan Kingsley uh, Echo. Norvan. Good morning, Mr. Governor. My name is Norvan Echo Hayford. I report for NorvanReports.com. And I want to ask you a question with regards to the cryptocurrency. And, um, you know, you have indicated that you want to regulate that together with SEC. And I want to find out from you if uh, we are looking at just using it as a trans for transactional use, looking at the assets as it is, or we are looking at establishing a crypto exchange. And also, will that also go through that rigorous testing that the ECB went through? Okay, no one, thank you, Kinsley. Okay, so I also want to find, uh, Governor, I said um, the currency being held by public uh, increase over the period, do you see that uh, threatening the disinflation process we are seeing, given that we will be entering Christmas very soon? Thank you. Okay, please be a call. Thank you, uh, um, Governor. Um, Given the stronger than anticipated GDP growth in recording in the first and second quarters, what is the bank's position or expectation of how NDA GDP is going to be like? And whether the uncertainty of election puts any risks, given that we've also exhausted our, our base effects, the positive base effect that we've been enjoying, since we run out of that. Having exhausted that, what do you see? Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Shawan. Thank you. You are aware that this is the last round. Okay, yeah. we will be very brief today. So the question from Norman on cryptocurrencies, I, uh, I mean, I only say that we announced that we are looking at the regulatory framework for the use of cryptocurrencies in, in this economy. The details will come out uh, as we get along. But I can assure you that we are not looking at establishing an exchange. That's not the central bank's uh, function. And then on this currency growth, uh, we don't think that the growth that we are seeing is significant enough to serve as a threat to the disinflation process. Uh, when you are seeing more growth, and the growth is associated with real economic activity, really, then the threat to you know, inflation will not be as significant. And this, again, goes into the nature of the growth that we are seeing. If you look at the data from the Ghana Statistical Service, go in there and you see that the growth was driven by industry. When you drill down further, you would see that within industry, that growth was driven by the mining sector. And when you drill down further into the mining sector, you see that the growth was driven by gold purchases. So it's related to the, again, the central bank domestic gold purchasing program is contributing very strongly to the growth that we are seeing. And that should answer the last question on this issue of exhausting base, base effects. This growth is not about base effects. This growth is about real economic activity, which is being financed by you know, central bank uh, gold purchases, as well as government expenditures on construction, which is the second highest, which recorded the second highest uh, in terms of, of growth in the numbers that were released by the uh, Ghana Statistical Service. The question going forward into the rest of the year, whether these activities will cease, but definitely we are not going to uh, stop purchasing gold between now and the end of the year. And the construction activities will continue to be robust. So I don't think that this base period issue comes into play at all, uh, given the end year outcome for Ghana's growth. So we'll leave it here. The message, I think it's a very positive message with you, which you should uh, carry out uh, from this MPC press 
conference, macroeconomic conditions have improved significantly. This economy is doing very well. If you look at even the exchange rate from 2017 till 2022, the city moved from four to six cities. Even after COVID, the exchange rate was at six cities. So the problem that we saw was just for 2022, where the exchange rate for the city went from six cities to 15. And we are recovering. And we are recovering very quickly, just from 2022. So I'm quite happy about the record of, of this Monetary Policy Committee and the work that we have done. And I think you guys need to you know, report accurately you know, on the developments on our economy. Thank you. Now, Thank you we have something Thank else you. to do before we close, which is to, to launch our new Ghana gold coin, which is a development which we think is important and reflects the commitment from the central bank to deepen our financial markets by offering other avenues for savers to invest. Everybody is getting up, rushing to buy dollar to save and put under pillows. You don't need to do that if you have options. Now, if you don't buy dollars, you can buy treasury bills or bonds. We are giving you an opportunity from the domestic gold purchasing program to also buy gold. This is what we are trying to launch now. And we call it the Ghana gold coin. The Ghana gold coin is manufactured from Dory gold, dug out of Ghana, which has been refined to 99%, percent purity. It is issued and guaranteed by the Bank of Ghana. It will be available in three different uh, units. That is the one ounce coin, the half ounce coin, and the quarter ounce coin to suit different investment needs. Each coin has the Ghana coat of arms in front and the independence arch at the back. The packing of the gold coin will be a wooden storage box, a transparent coin holder and a certificate of ownership. The Ghana Gold Coin enables the Bank of Ghana to mop up extra liquidity in the banking sector and will supplement the use of our Bank of Ghana bills and overnight depots for liquidity management. It gives savers resident in Ghana an additional avenue to invest, reap the benefits of the Bank of Ghana's gold, domestic gold purchase program. Gold, as you all know, is a, has been remarkable and resilient as a financial asset and can serve as a hedge during periods of economic turbulence. We see the issuance of this Ghana gold coin as it democratizes assets to enduring financial assets, enabling Ghanaian residents to diversify their financial portfolios. In the next two weeks, this will be available in the market to be purchased through commercial banks using the Ghana CD and will be priced on the basis of the London Billion Market Association auction price. The applicable transaction exchange rate for pricing shall be the United States dollar against the Ghana CD rate quoted using the previous day closed Bloomberg mid rate. The price will be published on the Bank of Ghana website daily by 9 a.m. Gold that we use for these coins, as I said, is resourced from Ghana, from traceable and responsibly mined sources in line with Bank of Ghana's responsible gold sourcing framework, anti-money laundering, and countering the financing of terrorism safeguards 
are in place to ensure that the buying and selling of the Ghana gold coins is devoid of criminal financial activities. The Bank of Ghana will publish a question and answers document to provide more insight into the issuance of the Ghana gold coin. Thank you very much. The coins are here. Those of you who want to take a picture of them. Do we have only one? This is which one is this? <coughs> which one is this? This is half an ounce. So we'll give you the opportunity to take pictures, just very briefly. Sir. <laughs> this is the one else. So they can take a closer picture of them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Continue to uh, work together. If you still have some additional questions, you can reach out to the communications department. We thank you for honoring your attention, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, First and Second Deputy Governors, members of the MPC. Thank you for our viewers who join our live broadcast. Continue to follow the bank's social media channels and our website. God willing, we will meet soon. Have a blessed good morning. Thank you.